Welcome to Water Level. Today, we take a close look at the current conditions of two of the most important reservoirs in the United States, Lake Mead and Lake Powell. These two massive bodies of water play a critical role in supplying water, power, and recreation to millions of people. Their levels are constantly monitored because even small changes can have major downstream effects. In this video, we'll break down where the lakes stand right now, how the water has shifted over the past year, and what these levels mean going forward. Let's begin with Lake Mead. As of September 27, 2025, the water level at Lake Mead sits at 1,056.90 feet above mean sea level. That is 172.10 feet below the full pool level of 1,229 feet. While this is far from maximum capacity, it represents a slight upward tick from recent weeks. In fact, the level has risen by about 0.07 feet since yesterday, showing a short-term gain. These small daily fluctuations are typical, but every rise and dip is carefully watched because of how crucial this reservoir is. If we look back earlier in 2025, the year began with water levels climbing modestly, reaching their seasonal high in the spring. By March, levels were holding just above 1,066 feet, showing the lake at one of its better points this year. However, as summer approached, outflows and demand began to draw the lake down. By mid-July, levels had dipped closer to 1,055 feet. Since then, the lake is held fairly steady, fluctuating in a narrow band but avoiding the steep drops that sometimes come late in the season. For comparison, 2024 was a very different story. At the start of that year, Lake Mead climbed sharply, peaking above 1,075 feet in April before steadily falling throughout the summer. By September of 2024, levels had slid down to just above 1,060 feet. 2023 painted yet another picture. The lake started lower, near 1,045 feet in January, but gained consistently through spring and early summer, reaching above 1,065 feet by July. These past years show just how much variability exists in the reservoir, depending on inflows, releases, and use. Now shifting our focus to Lake Powell, the situation there looks more concerning. On September 26, 2025, the latest recorded level for Lake Powell was 3,545.02 feet. That places the lake 154.98 feet below full pool, which is 3,700 feet. In terms of content, Powell is holding only 27.84% of its capacity, a strikingly low figure. At this depth, the lake is currently 413.02 feet deep at the dam, and there are just over 2.2 trillion gallons of water stored in the reservoir. Over the past 12 months, Lake Powell has seen a steady decline. In late September of 2024, levels were about 33 feet higher than they are today. That means in just one year, the reservoir has dropped by more than 33 feet. On top of that, current measurements show the lake is nearly 33 feet below its recent high point earlier this year. This is a stark reminder of just how quickly levels can fall. If we track the trend line through the year, it becomes clear. Water was lost almost continuously from October through May, with the lake falling by around 40 feet in that stretch. By June, there was a small seasonal rebound as runoff entered the system, but it was short-lived. Levels stabilized briefly in early summer before continuing their decline through July, August, and September. By now, we're left with one of the lowest water years on record for Powell. Looking at inflows and outflows gives more perspective. Total inflows for water year 2025 reached just over 5 million acre-feet. That's less than half the average for late September, which typically exceeds 10 million acre-feet. On the other side of the equation, outflows through the Glen Canyon Dam have totaled more than 7.4 million acre-feet this year. This means the lake has released substantially more than it has taken in, and that imbalance explains the net decline of more than 2.3 million acre-feet in storage. The contrast between the two reservoirs is striking. While Lake Mead has managed to hover in a relatively stable range through the summer, Lake Powell has endured a steep year-long drop. 
The two systems are linked, of course, since water released from Powell eventually makes its way into Mead. This connection means that what happens upstream at Powell has a direct effect downstream at Mead. If we zoom out to compare their current statuses side by side, Lake Mead at just under 1,057 feet is holding at about 38% of its capacity, while Lake Powell at 3,545 feet is sitting at less than 28% of its total storage. Both are far below their full pool levels, but Powell's sharp decline over the past year has made it the more critical point of concern right now. It's also worth noting that each small change in elevation translates to enormous amounts of water. For example, a one-foot drop in Lake Powell represents more than 70,000 acre-feet, enough to supply hundreds of thousands of households for a year. Similarly, a modest gain of half a foot in Lake Mead can add significant storage that helps stabilize the downstream system. This is why even day-to-day -day changes, like Mead's 0.07-foot gain yesterday, are meaningful to water managers. The charts also give us perspective on seasonal behavior. Mead typically sees its highs in the spring when inflows are strongest, followed by gradual declines into late summer and fall. Powell, on the other hand, shows long, steady declines punctuated by brief inflow surges in the late spring and early summer. This year's patterns followed that traditional outline, but the magnitude of Powell's losses stood out as especially sharp. What does this all mean moving forward? Simply put, the reservoirs remain at stressed levels, and their ability to recover depends on future inflows, management decisions, and controlled releases. For now, Mead appears to be holding steady at mid-1050s, which provides some short-term stability. Powell, however, continues to sit precariously low, with less than a third of its full storage available. Both lakes are critical to the entire Colorado River system, and their conditions are closely watched by water agencies, power authorities, and millions of residents who depend on them. The current readings provide a snapshot. Lake Mead, stable but still far from full, and Powell, significantly drawn down compared to both its capacity and its levels from just a year ago. These two numbers capture the challenge and highlight just how vital continued monitoring is. As we've seen, both Lake Mead and Lake Powell are holding at levels far below their full capacity, with Mead showing some short-term stability while Powell continues its steep decline. These measurements are more than just numbers on a chart. They represent the health of the reservoirs that millions rely on every single day. We'll keep tracking these levels closely because every foot of rise or drop matters. If you found this update useful, make sure to stay tuned for the next report as we continue to follow the water levels of Lake Mead and Lake Powell.